really like what you did here. The most intriguing part, <clears throat> you kind of threw a tree over it. <clears throat> you know, you kind of threw a tree over from the side. So, what I'm having trouble with is deciding what's more important. A tree, which is a very nondescript tree. Like, unless it was a tree with a guy hanging off of it. Or it had an assassin crouching, ready to kick some, kick some ass. Or if it was a tree that was part of a very well, de like a very well detailed tree, just it being a re well rendered tree, however dark in the foreground, or it might be a little bit blurred, it would still have to be a super awesome tree. Now these stamp tools that you used are hiding the best part of the image, which is this beautiful, beautiful use of color like phenomenal. You don't need these rays by the way, you don't need any of them. So let's focus on you know what you did here and try to undo it real quick. This whole business you've got here, this purple and that pale pale yellow that desaturated leaning on brown and then the shadows being purple, it's just beautiful. So we want to keep that. Alright, so I'm just trying to get that back. And when we do throw the tree back in, the tree has to be in a way where the background is still visible. The photographer would have attempted to get the most of the background if the background was the point of interest. If the detail that you've added here is the point of interest, which is the background. You can't throw an, an object in the foreground that is complete silhouette against it. The tree wouldn't even be a silhouette. It would be a little bit lit from the side as well. Unless the light was coming in off through a mountainside. And none of that purple, none of that yellow, actually darken, would have reached a certain, a certain area. Why is it darkening like that? All right, so the shadow would have stopped like up here. And then color. Right? Cuz it was just uh, the, the the light was only at the halfway mark. It was only above a certain area. Now that looks nice. That way the trees aren't expected to have any light on the sides of them. So just here. This wouldn't have been expected of you. <clears throat> now you can throw in the trees without them having to take over completely. So let me grab one of my tree stamps. Something really basic. Tilt that canvas. Something, something like that. Throw in some detail. this way without the detail taking over the point of interest which was in the background. <clears throat> so just need to make that make sense. I think you've used the same stamps I've used as well. <clears throat> it's just a collection of stamps. I'm going to be selling my brush set soon and these come with them as like the, the bunch that I've collected. I'm selling my custom ones with a bunch of these attached to them. Don't know when I'm going to go around doing that. i try to do it soon. I can't promise a certain day because I've just been so busy. But, um, yeah. If you don't want to have this much around, if you don't want to have uh, this many tree, these many trees because you want to show off the, the horizon line to be a little smoother, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to get rid of the trees for a sec and bring back that light that you had in. And the water, the, 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 the height of the water right here, that's just too sharp. Let me put my glasses on. I don't know why I'm not using my glasses. <clears throat> but my, my brushes are so personal to me. Like there's, uh, It was just like a journey. My entire art journey is preserved here. Like everything about what I've learned, all these brushes have a history. I've like had a, a year or six months with each brush. Like it's just, I don't know if I'm ready to sell it yet, but I don't know. Um, 
So yeah, this whole business right here, it shouldn't have been cut off like that. There should be some kind of torrential, a ter ter torrential, torrential, ter torrential, ter I don't know what the fucking word is. Ter torrential, I think that's the word. Um, let me look it up for fuck's sake. Torren torrential. No, it's not. It's not torrent. It's ter. Terra, 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 the Terra, the, the, the earth, the patterns of the earth, the formation of the earth. There should be some more of that anatomy over here. Connecting the water line with the base of this mountain. That's something that we need to work on. And then when we add the trees back in, and we should, we should bring, let me see, terrestrial. Is it terrestrial? I think it's terrestrial. Yeah, thank you. The terrestrial. I'm, I'm not sure if it's terrestrial, though. I'm, uh, that specific word, though. I'm not so sure it's terrestrial. It's, 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 it's at the tip of my tongue. Like, I know I've used the word before. It sounds like torrential, and it's not terrestrial. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yes, so... I'm going to bring that, that little bit down because, as you know, in a composition, you're not supposed to throw the POI now that we've decided the mountains are the POI. They're pretty much the only thing with that much contrast in them. They have to be the POI. So now that we've pulled that down, given it its space, before it was just too high along the canvas. It wasn't really attracting attention. I'm going to make it connect a little seamlessly. And this way, this will explain why this area is so void of any info. It might just be the fog. And this fog... I'm just going to toss it everywhere, just to show that this swampy area that, that kind of surrounds this kingdom, the fog just sits on top of everything. Not so much that it's just destroying the, count, the composition, but just enough. And we still need some kind of anatomy just along here, maybe clouds, terracial, Terracial, no, terrarial, <laughs> terabithia, <laughs> torrential, I, that's the word I thought I was using, terrain, it, it, it comes from the word terrain, but I don't know what it is, um, next up would be selecting these areas, so the light that does fall on them, I'm sure it falls on them on a gradient of sorts, because light works in rays, so I'm just going to make the very peaks of this nice and bright, catching the sunlight. And if you still want that beautiful saturation, you can still throw it in. It's still applicable. That's at 100%. Okay. I do recommend this. This is really nice. It's really cool. Color. Oh. It's still selected. Okay. Maybe I can merge these two. No. I would just have to erase. And I would make some of these like uh, not everything orange. It would be really cool if we did that. And I'm going to merge that down maybe. I don't think this is needed, but I do have to erase some of this. And again, only the very the very heights of the mountainside nearby are that illuminated. And then if this is reflected or you want to invest some reflection in it, you don't have to follow the rules. You can have this area reflective. Okay? So just a little bit of organization and some missing anatomy over here. We, I'd love to see some kind of some kind of connective structure, some sort of boat, something that makes that, that, that you know I don't know what the narrative would be, but something that connects all of this together. So it would its spiral works a little something like that. There needs to be something here, something here, something here. This is check. This is missing, and this is missing. This can be the trees. I mean, the trees are just, they're, 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 they're minor, they're secondary props. They're not the POIs, and the POIs always have to work along a line of sight. 
but it's a composition. It's not just a vertical canvas. So the line of sight has to travel through stuff, and that's where the secondaries come in. The mountains here, the clouds, I mean, the trees here, the, the clouds here, maybe some mountains here, and maybe some extra clouds here. If I was a photographer and I saw that the, and I was walking by this area and I saw that the golden ratio was met perfectly by nature and everything was just set up and asking to be photographed, I'd have just taken the photo. I, I, I'd have just, I don't know, I would have invented the photo, the, the, the camera right there and I'd have taken that photo. Very rarely do we get this kind of opportunity in the real world, but as, as artists, we, we have to imagine the best case scenario for the composition and apply it. We don't always, we can't always use the excuse, well, you know, in real life, shit is random. Yeah, shit is random in real life and not very photogenic either. Yeah, it's very easy to point up and shoot at the clouds, but to get that perfect composition, God, there's this one video about a tornado, and it was the most beautiful tornado, and for the love of God, it was just, God, it was the most pretty tornado you've ever seen. Right here, the composition was beautiful. The, the, the canvas wasn't wide because that's just the camera he was shooting with. But all of the points of interest were set up perfectly. This is a secondary prop. And the canvas, the, the spiral was doing something like that. So in every point of the spiral, there was either a secondary or primary point of interest. And right here where the spiral, con spiral concentrates, the canvas could have been a little longer, but that's where all the points of interest are. One, two, three, four and then it's all empty space, just large brushwork, large brushwork. Like, this is the only time I've ever seen this shit happen, and it's a video, too, and it's got really sad music. I mean, oh, it is a long video. Look at that. That's just perfection. <clears throat> you know, very rarely does nature, is nature so photogenic. So remember these little, the, the, this, this spiral tool, this golden ratio, it really will help you organize your composition better so it'll tell you where you need something just something anything a boat a, a couple of extra clouds here uh, maybe some rough mountain sides that, that are also getting some of that light actually so let me see if I can do it now <clears throat> okay grab that dark color Grab some of this dark color, and then right here at the very tops, with this casting the shadow, we get this orange color, just just around that area. Of course, it can't be a pyramid; it has to have a real color to it, and um, I mean a real shape to it. You can give it all kinds of little adjustments you can erase some parts of it that are leading into a I forgot to turn off the transparency that are leading into um, the shadow so that's one way to respond and, and, and it's like you have the golden ratio but you just don't know what to do with it this is how to know what, what to do with it right here Alright, maybe I can throw in a couple of extra little details. Remember, detail, write this back to me, everybody. Detail isn't about shrinking your brush. Sometimes it's just about cleaning up an edge and making it sharp. And then a tiny little boat over here. I don't know what kind of boat this is, but it's some kind of fancy boat. Just something very, very basic, and then some some clouds. And the clouds also, you start off with the basic color. What the fuck? Start up the hell. And at the very height of the cloud. very invisible cloud, we throw in some of that orange, or actually the cloud is in all of the orange, just make the cloud a little orange. This way we're filling up the canvas along the, the, I think this is a little bit off of the, yeah, it's supposed to be a little bit to the side, but, 
Okay. You can lower opacities as you need to, but this is pretty much what we need to be doing in our in our in our paintings, trying to organize and provide the information selectively, making sure that we're not just throwing everything together. Over here there could have been some kind of rock work, some extra distance areas where the fog is having a little bit more of an effect, so it's a little bit foggier. Built like a built like a depth system over here. This is darker and darker. Almost dark, darker and darkest. Some extra rock formations. Maybe you won't need the trees so much once you do that. <clears throat> Alright. So before the tree was just completely in the way. I mean this tree must have been colossal. It just feels like a massive tree, even for the foreground. And then after we're pushing everything down, we'll ignore that, but before. And you see how this is what was your POI? Look at that. Purple and yellow. Ever all the eyes are going here. This is the star of the show. This is the diva. It is not the tree. The tree is in the foreground. It's not important. It's in the way, if anything. You know, stuff in the foreground is always in the way. and after. Alright? Alright. <clears throat> Detail isn't about shrinking your brush. Perfect. So these are all possible choices you can make with your canvas. It really just depends on the story, what you feel like doing. Now, um, I wanted to talk about... Actually, I'll leave portraits for another day because you guys are making demands. Um, there's only so much I could talk about when it comes to figure drawing. A lot of it is mileage, unfortunately. and um, But there are things that you can do to organize your, your yourself. The most important thing, and I talk about this a lot, and if you want my opinion on figure drawing, about anything to do with figure drawing, my book has all that information in it. Um, it also comes with some sketch sketching brushes, you know, so that you don't have to look for these really uh, wiry brushes. There's, it comes with brushes in it in there as well. But what I talk about are th some basic things. The most important thing from drawing, in drawing or uh, figure drawings, is getting your gesture line down. If you don't have the spine and the head and the trunk, torso and the shoulders, you don't have all of this stuff addressed early on, you will not execute a successful looking figure. Things won't look organized. They will look messy and they will leave you guessing. And your guessing won't just happen in your head. It will happen in your brush. It'll happen in your head and it'll lead to it happening in your brush. We get chicken scratch lines like this. We get recursive lines. What is that? Why? Why? I'm going to be a little mean and I'm going to be a little rough. And if you don't like it, leave my channel and stop the video. Why? Why? Why is this? Why? 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 Everyone ask why. Everyone write down the word. Why? Why? Is it because the head is hairy? I mean, this is a bald girl. Is it because her head has fur in it? Why? Why the many lines? <laughs> I just want to hold your heads and shake them. Why? Huh? Why? <laughs> so that's all that I can't. It sounds like I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. If the head is not hairy, furry, or 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 it's not a peach then there's no need for chicken scratch line. Never was there a need. I don't care what you've looked at in the past. I don't care how you sketch on your brush. This looks bad. All right, it takes attention away from here. When we cluster lines together, we create the illusion of detail. It is detail because you're putting a bunch of lines beside each other. This is detail. This is detail. When our lines look like this, we're attracting the eye towards these areas when the eye should be right here where the eye belongs in the major points of interest on the face that cross of attention needs to go that cross of detail needs to go here all right it's a habit and it's not just a habit it's a bad habit all right if the person isn't holding if the person doesn't have like a fur coat all right if their hair isn't really messed up that day, all right. If if there is some kind of, you know, really fuzzy '90s style frost tip hairline, there's no need to 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 use multiple lines for an area that only requires one line. The rule for figure drawing is use as little lines as possible. 
That's the rule for line art. That's the rule for figure drawing, for gesture drawings, for anything. Use as little lines as possible. When you emit the line completely, that's how closer that's you get that much closer to realism. Sometimes we just don't want that much realism. We just want some lines and some colors, some cell shades for our manga, for, for our comic book full of our original characters. <clears throat> All right. So if if we if we use as many lines as we want, we're no longer making every line count. Every line that we draw means nothing. If we're using every single line accessible to us, everything will look like the first two stages of the painting, which is gesture of the gesture line drawing, which is the gesture, the gesture with the, the shapes on it, whatever the shapes may be. Everything will look like these two. Nothing will look like that final stage where we have detail. I do this in my drawings. I do this in all of them. I'm gonna sh I don't like ever showing my work. I hate showing my work, but this is what I'm going to do. Sorry, I was messing around with the brush. <clears throat> this is what I do. This is what I will always do because it works. It works because it forces me to think like an animator. It forces me to think that I have to animate this line later. How are you going to animate this head? You're going to have to track every single line? No. Why? Why do you need this many? You don't need this many lines. You don't. Over here, this sketch right here, take a look. When I turn all of these off, this is this is where it all happened. This is what led me to to, to this final completed stage. Right here. Let me show you another one. This is what led me to the final completed stage. If I don't if I don't minimize my line use here, I could I will just jump into this and use like a hell of a lot of lines for no reason whatsoever and it will minimize animatability. It will minimize the fluidity of the of the image. I won't really follow this. I'll draw a whole other image. Maybe I'll draw one kind of image in the sketch, but the end of, end drawing looks completely different. Uh, there are so many things not to do when you when you're I'm trying to find another one where it looked really bad. The sketches were just the underlying sketches were just so so yeah, right here. All right, this is what it should look like at this stage. And when you're done, your final lines should be measured. Your final lines should be really calculated. They should have intent. They should have they should have they should be deliberate. They should not be accidental. I will forever shame any student who walks into my class with these kinds of lines and I'll break you and you're just going to have to get used to the roughness of my teaching style. I'm sorry. I cannot allow this kind. I will not be an enabler. I will not enable you. Oh, maybe just like, you know, organize them a little bit. Maybe just make them more symmetrical. No, don't use them at all. Absolutely not. I will not enable this. The professionals, the real, like I'm talking Scott Robertson, man. That guy's efficiency is off. <clears throat> is just so perfect because he knows exactly where he wants to put the line. Every line has a mechanical, deliberate, mechanical importance to the anatomy. And if you're li I don't think this one has a deliberate mechanical importance to the anatomy. I don't think this one has a particular mechanical importance for the anatomy. I don't think this one right here does. But when you think about sketches that do have an intent behind them, this shoulder has, this shoulder line has a mechanical importance to the anatomy. This one has a mechanical importance in it. This is the edge. This does. This does. This is why we lessen the amount of lines we use so that we can maximize line efficiency. Line efficiency is a term, but what does it really mean? I'm losing my breath. What does it really mean? It means that every line is used with a purpose. It has a motive behind it. It has an intent behind it. It is deliberate. It is used to animate. It is used to anime, not just animation, it used to make it move, bring it to life, make it an an animate object from an inanimate object, an animated object. All right? No more multiple lines. Wrong, 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 especially wrong. I want to see long, fluid lines. The next rule is, okay, the first rule was make sure there is an, 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 an mechanical, oh wait, what was, what was that term I just said? An, an anatomical, mechanical something shit. Make sure that's there. The second thing, use, use as many, as little lines as possible to summarize or cover as much anatomy as possible. So it's not just about using little, a little amount of lines, less amount of lines. It's about using those lines and making sure you're covering a lot of space. So when I sketch, this is exactly what I do. I try to throw one massive line here and one massive line here. 
I try to do this all in one line. If it's one line that I have to cut into pieces, I try to continue that line seamlessly. I will sit there. If you've ever seen my streams, I will fucking sit there and I will control Z hundreds, hundreds of times until I get this kind of continuation. Now it looks like one line. It's okay if it breaks into two, but it's not okay to do this. All right? It's not okay to do that because, well, we're artists and we can do whatever we want. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't care how many times you guys pat yourselves on the back for your uniqueness. Everyone's unique in their own way, but there are specific rules that have to be followed or else this, this beautiful sketch just becomes just just gets thrown in the dumps because it's it's got all these unnecessary lines on it. And also, what's with the white background, man? Do you, do you want me to kick your butt? <laughs> are you looking for that today? Because I will do that. <clears throat> I'm joking. But I will, I will lessen this, get rid of that white background. I will get this background again, lower that opacity all the way down. And together, deal with it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to draw over it. I'm going to draw over it right now and show you how amazing the sketch was and how those lines were ruining it. It's okay to have crappy, really messed up, really messy ass lines in the first two stages. You saw my sketches, but when you get into this final stage... This final stage right now is when you have to start counting. Tell yourself, okay, listen, motherfucker, I'm only going to have 20 lines, okay? I don't care what Isterak says about it. Isterak is going to use only 20 lines. I'm not going to use any more than that. And if I try to use any more than that, I will restart the sketch. In fact, I will just... If, if I don't have that kind of perfection in my work, if I don't, if I don't force myself with that kind of discipline, who's going to force me? Who's going to sit over my head and tell me not to use this many lines? Who's going to do that? All you have is yourself. You're your own coach. You have to have a degree of discipline in order to give you in order to discipline yourself. If if this is me and I'm being a bitch telling you guys about it because I I, I believe in this wholeheartedly but uh, you know, if it wasn't for me doing this for myself, I would never have reached the level at that, that I am in now. I would not have this line efficiency. Everyone's always talking about, oh, nice lines, nice flow. What's your brush? Can I have your brush? And it's always because my lines are very calculated and they have intent. Not not 100%. I'm still I'm still working. I'm still a student. But they make, they, they come with a purpose. <clears throat> so let's do this together. Let's just do this for the rest of the 30 minutes in class. Let's do this together. Where would I use really calculated, important for the mechanical anatomy lines? Where would I put them? First and most important one, I probably do need my own rough because I, I like working with my own rough lines, but I'm just going to work with yours. See what I can do. Okay, I usually start with the head. And I will, I will control Z as much as I have to. So that that line here is at number one accuracy. I'm calculating the bump of the cranium, the base, the, the height of the cranium, and the bump of the forehead all on the same line. Until it looks right to me. Okay. I'm going to throw a little bit of a texture here. It's okay. I'm, I'm using many lines now because I have to deal with hair. I have to draw the hair. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it look like hair. I'm making it hairy. But if your lines are hairy and there's no hair to be seen, that's when you've made a mistake. All right. I'm going to erase the tail of that one. It's okay to erase tails. I zoom in for detail like this, but it's not really detail. I zoom right back out as soon as I have control. And then I try to get the cheek, the other cheek, and the the the, the, the stacking that happens with a downturned head. The perspective of the cube is being looked at like this. So I'm trying to capture that. The ears are high. You got all of that down perfectly. You have such a, a hold over your anatomy that it was really very, very sad seeing that kind of extensive hairy, extensive hairy line. It just it was such a a muting factor to the quality of your sketches. One line, one line here. The arms have a bit of a of a, of a straightness to them. Um, I don't think you have this right. start of the armpit and then the straightness of the bicep straightness of I usually use this kind of spring to make sure my arms are the right length but 
Okay, and then we have this this little corner here. This shows that the elbow is made of bone and not made of fat. If it curves too much, it looks like it's made of fat. And then one line to summarize the spine and the other and the butt cheek. One line. And then the hip. And then one line for, I usually like doing it, one line for the thigh. And then the, the base of the buttocks and then again one line. And then again, just like the elbow, the knee needs a straight line to it. It needs to be treated like a bone. So it gets that straight line. And then you've got the calf. I'm not sure where the other foot is. Typically I, I throw a nice circle here for the for the calves. And then a nice circle here, a circle here, a circle here, so I know what to draw around. Because any areas that are circular need that attention. This is pretty much my process, which we, we try to minimize, I think this would be on top, we try to minimize as much as possible the, the amount of lines we're using, we're trying to summarize as much anatomy as possible with that. This first line is really wrong. This hairline should be a little bit lower, because it's, we're looking up at the head, we're looking down at the head. And that's my process, that's my entire process. I have to make sure that my lines underneath are all clean. Summarize as much anatomy as possible. Usually if it's a boy's body, I do something like that. You see, these when these two lines meet each other, when they create an angle, they act like a bone. And the rib bone is the hardest thing really to do. And then connect that anatomy. In one fell swoop, I, I summarize the armpit and the top of the arm. This is what I mean, covering as much anatomy with as little, I hate brushing upward, but with as little effort as possible. One circle for the, I usually like doing something like that, but one circle for the bicep, and then again, closing that down, and then getting the rest of the arm. And once I have the base down, like that, sorry, it's most of it is experimental. Try to get the hip and then the rest of the thighs moving in like that. <clears throat> Bulge, the calf, and then the bones also get that cube-like angle to them. And then once I get the torso, I was trying to say, I then throw in the, the breasts. The breasts get their own layer and their own anatomy because they, they, they're just squishy. They point down. So what, what happens, I can't treat them like dense muscle or a bone. I have to give them their own attention. And I only throw the shadow down here. I don't draw this for the boobs. I don't do this for the boobs. Only the lowest point, the heaviest point, gets that shadow or the outline. And then following the symmetry line, the, 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 the symmetry line that sits on top, I throw in the belly button. The belly button points in the direction that it's, you know, what's what's ahead of it first, what's closer to me, this part of the fat or this part that's closest to us. Make sure that this line here connects to this one. Again, one line to summarize as much anatomy as possible. This line leads this. I'm not going to connect them because they don't connect, but I am going to hint at them getting connected because they do connect. In uh, in, in the body, they do connect. They're part of the same pelvic system, the same pelvic family. And then try to one long, and as you can see, I'm deliberately moving my brush very fast. Because the faster the line, the smoother the line. Write that back to me. The, the shoulders here are very asymmetrical. The shoulder needs to have this kind of, and this arm is very long. I'll just do the torso. This hip points this way because it's just one cylinder in front of another cylinder, which is beside another cylinder. If you think large shapes, these shapes can be dressed up in the original gesture line, but I don't see a gesture line here. 
the gesture line should have looked something, the gesture drawing should have looked something like that. Usually the gesture line, you know, the gesture drawing phase, the gesture lines look very rough. It's okay, but as long as we get these nice, fast, smooth, really, really dynamic lines, that way we exaggerate on an artistic and cartooning level and an anima in a, through an animator's perspective, the, the movement. Animators like to exaggerate movements because it reads better on the screen. The walk arc, the walk cycle, the walk gestures of the arms and legs are exaggerated just a little bit more. Nobody walks like that in the real world, but our cartoons can. This breast, I always leave the breasts for last because they move along the body. Wherever the weight is moving, wherever the arms, if an arm is stretched upward, the breasts tend to kind of stretch as well. And this one just falls off because it's not being stretched, it's being pulled down, but it's not just pulled down or sitting low, it's being pulled to this side because the body's leaning this way. And this is how I do all my gesture drawings, all of them. If I'm copying from a reference, where is that reference from earlier? I recommend you guys do this as well. I really recommend you guys do this. Where's that reference? <clears throat> you get the reference and you draw over it. Whoever told you don't trace, just tell them, fuck you, leave me alone. I'm trying to learn how to be a professional artist. You go do you, I'm going to do me. All right, get your lines practice on top practice your accuracy this is something I did as well I do it now still look when I see someone on the street when I see someone in their car when I'm when I was on the bus when I was going to school I would just sit there and all I see are gesture lines and, I, and I, that became a habit so I be, uh, gesture lines became very accessible to me look at this one long beautiful gesture line you can also summarize this in the gesture this is the actual spine she has but the full gesture line can be so, they made something into like that and then you've got the hip, hip, which also indicates where to find the buttocks, and then the spring. This is an amazing method to get yourself more familiar with, an, with anatomy by using these tools. You'll always trust them. And the breasts, breasts come after. Make sure you get the torso first. Make sure the torso is three-dimensional. It's a cube-like torso. Make sure the cylinder of the hips is, is, is in, the, in the right perspective. This is what this is how you get the best kind and make sure you always know the exact tilt of the spine. What kind of tilt is in the spine? Right along here. The tilt of the spine is outward for her. Her her chest is going forward. And then the hips. <clears throat> I usually don't do that. I just go straight into I try to summarize as much anatomy as possible, so I try to do something like that. Now I know where the separation is between the buttocks and the thighs and I know where the hips are. And then I have the two shoulders. Finding the shoulders is so important. And then once I fill that up, once, once I have these two edges, I've basically cornered the reference in, and now I can fill it up. Fill it up with some anatomy. And then finding the curve, especially for females, is very easy. You just connect this side to this side and make sure it's an inward curve. This fat is in front of this cylinder, which means this line goes over, and then the thigh starts. This is okay. To do this is okay. To, to do this here, going in raw, going in raw, I'm going to make a really nasty joke. No, I'm not. Going in raw is not good. <laughs> All right? It's good if it's on the rough stage, but why would you draw on the rough stage? You need gesture lines and cylinders and spheres and cubes in your, on your gesture lines and your rough lines, or else you won't be able to know what to do when you're here, which will lead you to doing making these mistakes. <clears throat> What's everybody saying? Um, lessens the li wo line wobble. Yes, r moving the line fast lessens the wobble, lessens the like the, the anxiety factor in there. Oh my god, I'm near the, uh, the, the ribs. I know I don't know how to draw ribs. You can't draw ribs. What are you doing drawing ribs? You don't know how to draw ribs and your brain is panicking and, and that your house is on fire and then this this happens but when you have a nice set of beautiful shapes underneath saying hey baby I got you you can do whatever you want I got you you won't make a mistake I got you man and you're like oh yeah I can do this I can do this throw in that line BAM accurate BAM accurate BAM accurate rib line stomach line hip line BAM accurate all right, belly. This is not that accurate, <laughs> and then 
Downward facing C for the breast. Make them look like they actually point downward. Accurate, accurate, beautiful. All right, this is what it's supposed to be. This is lesson number one in all of my private sessions. Everyone that I've ever taught, this is lesson number one. If I see, I'm gonna count your lines. The more lines that I see, the longer we spend on figures and, and gestures, that's it. If I see lots of lines, I'm, I'm gonna count them. I'm gonna count them. You reached your cap, Mr. Whoever I critiqued today. I'm so sorry, I was really rough with you. It's okay, you reached your cap right about here. <laughs> this is wrong. Why? Why? All right. I know I'm asking why and I'm being rough, but I'm telling you how not to, and I never want to see this again. I love these circles you're using. They're all not being used to their full potential. Your final layer of, of lines should be calculated and counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. What? Fifteen. And we've covered half, almost all the body. Sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. All right, I'm gonna count. I'm actually gonna count these. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to make a point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> no. No, never do this, never. I will find you. I will find you and I will climb through your window and I will stare at you creepily while you sleep like Edward, Edward, whatever the, Edward, Edward Cullen, Edward Sparkly ass. I will do this. <clears throat> okay? All right. Do you guys get me? You prefer things rough. <laughs> Okay, it's a whole family in there, yeah. So um, it, it, we're not supposed to be overusing our lines. We only have so many lines to use. All of these lines will one day turn into an edge and, and fulfill their dreams of being a, a full illustration. All of these lines dream one day of being fully illustrated. They, they want to be chosen by, by senpai, and senpai is just not even giving them a chance. Senpai is like, here, you want pie? Here's pie. Here's here's some snacks. Get nice and fat. And no one will ever draft you for a full illustration. I'm sorry, you guys, uh, you, you completely lost me now. I'm out of here. I'm like, I'm lost now. I'm just, I'm just like beside myself. Why, there's no, like, there should be someone out there. Proko should be covering this. Psycho should be covering this. Everybody should be covering. Everyone should always speak this mantra. Use as little lines as possible. Don't chicken scratch. Don't re don't create that recursive line. Don't um, you know all the all the beginner students should always have someone, some channel, maybe their art teacher, someone somewhere, tell them stop using this many lines because it it just leads it slows down your progress so much. Imagine how much you know. You guys are at a skill level that you don't know yet that your art isn't revealing to you yet. The skill level is hidden by your lack of line efficiency. Your skill level is being uh, stunted by your lack of a line efficiency. All right, <clears throat> all right. And if and if you guys don't remember this, just remember why. Just ask yourself, why would I use this many lines? What's the purpose? Why am I not planning? If I had planned and zoomed out, I'd have known that this head is too big, that this arm is too short, that this leg isn't really helping this lunge. Um, that the, the weight distribution wasn't even, she looked like she was about to fall backward, she wasn't very stable. When the leg is backward, it feels very stable, it acts stable, it supports you. Um, this, this buttocks would have been a little bit higher than this one, which would have been a little more relaxed because of the lunge. Um, what else? The perspective, the head size, after all of that, and then you clean that up, follow up with some nice, clean, guided, fast, accurate lines, control Z as much as you want. I am here giving you guys <clears throat> the license to control Z to infinity. All right? Control Z, control Z, control whatever and to, into into infinity, all right? But just don't do the recursive line. Don't think that you can't control Z because you think you can't. You lead yourself into these these terrible, dirty, hairy lines. All right? feel like Twitter artist threads come up with new and interesting words to define, define confidence. 
<clears throat> Confidence in your lines, yeah. <laughs> and bam, accurate hairy balls. <laughs> It's okay. Whoever did this, I love you because you posted this and you had the courage to post it and now because you posted it, I, I did this lesson. I wanted to do it on Tuesday, but I, I, I was focusing on landscapes on Tuesday. So thank you. Please post as many as many figure drawings as you guys want. All of you, my minions, please make sure that you, when you critique each other, remember to advise each other not to use a hairy line. It is the biggest stunting factor. It is the biggest crippling um, weakness that you can have as a, as a student. Uh, a professional will never have this, or will never be in danger of this. It, it, uh, an intermediate would never be in danger of it because they just, they have that instinct not to use that many lines anymore. They kind of get satisfied with the first couple lines they draw. But beginners who are trying to learn some anatomy, and they're just trying to learn anatomy. They're not there to make amazing liner. They're just trying to learn anatomy like humble, beautiful students that they are. But they have these hairy lines that they don't even notice because these hairy lines are there curtaining over their current skill level. They don't even know how much they've improved. These hairy lines just get in the way. <clears throat> I will climb through your window. I will climb. You'll see like a really angry face. I'll be so mad and I'll have my pen tablet in my hand. I'll just scratch at your window and I'll tell you why, why. All right. No hairy lines, all right? So please post your stuff on the community. The community, um, if you don't know where it is, you can find it. Go to istabrak.com and you can find it by clicking on the little G. You can find it there. And post your sketches. Please post them. The more you the more you post them, the better we'll be able to get rid of these stigmas in our work, these, these issues in our work. Not, where's the other sketches? So over here for this one, head too big. Why is the head too big? Because he never planned it. There weren't any gesture lines. When you have the gesture line and then you have the circle of the cranium, you can follow that circle of the cranium with a nice little indicator for where the jaw is. By the way, guys, please write this back to me. Never use a circle and then your gesture lines. Like, never do this. All right? Ooh, you know, never do that always do a smaller cranium, a smaller circle for the cranium, and then follow up with that nice jaw, you know, whatever the jaw is. For me, I have a, <laughs> that's a massive head, but this will help you make it less, like you have less of that large head syndrome in your, in your drawings. A lot of you, you know, the person we just looked at and this person both have a large head in their painting. Why did that happen? No planning. All right. When you have, when you're 20 seconds in and you notice you drew a large head, what's easier to fix when you're tw 20 seconds in or 2 hours in? If the head is massive, 20 seconds in, hey, erase it. So your worthless line didn't, you know, cost you that much to make. All right, easy. I'll fix it. Easy. Fixed. But that's much easier done than, than you know, this far. And you're going to have to get the lasso tool and then you're going to have to get the transform tool and you have to shrink it and you have to zoom back out and make sure it's perfect. All right, this is corrective stuff. You shouldn't depend too much on the corrective stuff. That's my job. All right, I'll use the lasso tool. I'll use the transform tool. You guys, you guys do a better job so that I have nothing to critique and <laughs> and then i am just become obsolete. <clears throat> Never use a circle in your gesture line for the head. Uh, no, 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 no. Be specific, dragon. Never use a circle line a circle in your gesture line drawings for the head. Never use only a circle. Please use circles for shoulders. Use circles for hips. Um, use circles for boobies. Use circles for calves. Um, uh, I just mean don't use only a circle. Use a circle plus the square of the jawline for an adult head. This way it will not look too big. You won't end up drawing an alien and, uh, and everybody can go home. All right, so if I draw hairy lines, a civil will come visit me in the night. Time to draw hairy lines. <laughs> oh, it won't be a very nice visit, though, Vince. I will come with a pair of nail clippers. <clears throat> Why? I've lost my voice, but I just care, I care so much about this. Fuck my voice. Who cares about my voice? All right, please remember, always, and always, no pointy chins for the love of Jesus Christ Almighty. No pointy chins. I'm not even Christian. I don't even know why I say that. Um, damn you. What's his name? What's that funny guy's name? With the with the jokes. 
Anyways, please make sure that after you draw the circle of the cranium and follow with the jaw, nice little square, square off that little thing. Want to know why you got to do this? Because this proportion leads to the mouth, which leads to the nose, which leads to the eyes. It lets you know which perspective you're in. All right, this beautiful thing right here. Where are you? Critique you, resources. This beautiful doohickey that I will always reference. Whoever drew this, may God bless you. If I could find you wherever you are on the internet and you have like a donation button, I will send you $100. Because this, this right here is just wonderful, the way you put this together. This squareness to the jaw, the, the non-pointy chin, the squared chin, is, it has everything to do with perspective. It has everything to do with where you know how the perspective cascades um, and collapses into cascades. Yeah, I think that's the word cascades um, towards the rest of it, rest of the anatomy. All right, please, no pointy chins. <clears throat> um, more gesture lines. All right, the gesture line will help you capture capture that 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 movement. So this one, I think you referenced it out of this right here, this girl, and you see how you, you got a C-shaped spine, but really her spine was sticking out, so her, her spine was like this, you got the complete opposite spine, get the reference and sketch over it, you are allowed to do this, I give you the green ticket, if anybody asks you who told you to do this, say Istabrak, give them my form submission information, they can contact me personally, and, and if they have beef, they can go ahead and, and, and have a little brawl with me, a bro down outside I don't mind but if you have to have a ticket from it like if you, if you have to do it you have to make sure that you do it just remember I asked you to do it all right and you can go ahead if you have to do this just send them to me send them my way <clears throat> send them my way say Isterek say Isterek's waiting for you all right whoever tells you that tracing is a bad learning tool just send them my way <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, can you link that picture, Arista, with the skull perspective? Um, I don't know. I don't know how to reverse search on Google. I would have just reverse searched it and found the person myself. All right. Is that what you do? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just dropping the. Damn it. Reverse image search. Uh, this, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Did I just drag and drop? No, <laughs> that's not what you do. Um, yeah. Oh no, that pointy chin thing. What's the? What does that have anything to do with Sycra? No, no, no. As on, no, no, no. It's just in general, pointy chins are not accurate. If you're doing anime style or hybrid style, then go ahead and do all the pointy chins you want. But I'm saying, realistic figure drawing, don't do, draw draw the pointy chin. I have a lot of students that come in with that pointy chin. Go to Google picture search. Oh yeah, you screenshot it. Go ahead, yeah. Screenshot it and just search it. <coughs> Vince. <laughs> All right. So, this is a lot of information today. I kind of just, you know, just literally got a bucket and just threw it on your heads. We jumped from a landscape straight into that rant. I hope my rant was educational. I hope it kind of Let's you know what you should be working on right now, and if you have hairy lines, drop everything and start control Zing. Drop everything and start focusing on perfecting your gesture line, making sure the gesture line and the spine are together. They're linked. Right now, I'm lacing my fingers together to represent how linked they are. All right, they're linked. All right, which means that one comes with the other. The spine leads to the torso. The torso leads to everything else. It's the trunk of the body, and if you don't have, if you have the wrong tilt. You will not get the right, it will, it will be inaccurate, you will not get the right, um, you, you know, look, you won't get the right flow, you won't get the right weight distribution, it won't look right. Also, make sure you're not giving yourself, when I sketch, my sketches have all the space they need. They have all the space, I don't share it with another picture on the side, because if there's a picture there, little old Istabrak on, on Photoshop in her stream will start getting freaked out by this picture. So if you have like this freaky looking thing, um, all right, let's make this fun. If we have this freaky looking other picture that I drew 20 minutes ago, all right, and it's just sitting there and I have to sketch another picture, I will be afraid of this picture. My lines will be a little bit stunted. They'll be like, yeah, I don't want to go there. 
Yeah, there's another picture there. I don't want to overlap my lines. And that's wrong, which is what happened here. You are trying to fit too much in the same canvas, which is why she looks like she's much younger. This is a full, this is a, this is a female body. This is a, like an adult female body, but your rendition made her look younger because you stunt, her growth was stunted because there was something up here. I don't know if you drew them on the same time. I don't know if you drew that later, but make sure you're not sharing space. You give everything its own individual space that it needs. All right, bathe your lines. No more dirty lines. Give them a bath. Give them a nice old bath. You saw my sketches. You saw the lines that I used. You saw how many lines it took me to finish this entire anatomy. Less than 50. All right, 50 is too much. 50 is when you got those crazy details. Make sure your brush isn't pencil thin. Make sure your brush is nice and large. That works like a real figure drawing Conte or charcoal pencil. Nobody uses those thin Sakura line art manga pencils for figure drawing class. It makes no sense. <clears throat> a good trick against hairy lines for the rough first sketch is not to lift your pen from the paper. Actually, that's a that's not good, Kama Salion. I don't agree with that because look at what happens when we can't lift our lines from the paper. Like it, 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 we we tend to do the recursive thing. If I know I only get this one shot, and I can just you know I can lift my pencil, but all I need to know, like I, I'm given as many controls as I want, and I'm given the fact that I can lift my pen. These are two major anxiety factors that are now lifted. All that's left now is for me to get the right the right shape, the right line, the right, to do the right one. <clears throat> but if I'm not lifting my pencil and I'm trying to, I slow down. Whatever slows you down, whatever slows you down, do not do. The faster you work, the, the cleaner your lines are. The the 30 gesture thing, the 30 second gesture thing, that that's there for a reason. The speed factor is in there. You shouldn't need that much time to capture the basic gesture and you'll need less and less time per drawing. Unless it's like a deliberately clean, like this is cleaner than I usually do. I usually do some really dirty lines, um, but they're still high efficiency. I still, I, I mean, I, I'm aiming at high efficiency. This one is pretty dirty compared to what we saw here. Not that it's just, not only that it's naked, that it's dirty. <laughs> All right, this is very, very dirty line, but it's still, that line efficiency is still there. No hairy line, no, no backwards lines, um, pretty high. I mean, I can tell you now where I have crappy lines. Like, this is absolute trash. This is just junk. I just need to delete that off my page. This guy here also. I mean, I used a lot of lines is what I'm saying. They're not recursive, but I use a lot. Like, look at this. I layered it where it didn't have to be. I tried to draw the beard underneath. It, you don't draw accessories underneath. This is pretty high efficiency. <clears throat> These lines were slow. You can tell. These lines were slow. This is high efficiency right here. I'm kind of proud of this one. Um, where else? These ones, I'm, I, I control Z so many times, and I started cleaning up. The more I sketched, I made a New Year's resolution in January, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I, I'm going to sketch every single day, no matter what it takes. And I've been trying to do that. <clears throat> and my lines have been getting cleaner and cleaner. This is pretty dirty compared to what I'm drawing nowadays. The lines are pretty recursive. They're kind of nervous. Perspective is really bad. Look at that. Oh my god. <clears throat> but I got a little bit better. I don't know what that is. You can see I'm getting a little bit better here. But if I go to my really, really old stuff. <clears throat> now it's just repeating. Um, my really, look, my, my latest stuff has a lot more efficiency. Um, but my, my really old stuff. Like, let's go to my DeviantArt. I think that's where they are. Let me show you. No, 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 not that one. Deviant art. <laughs> Gallery. Hurry up. Right here. Look. Look at the recursive lines. <clears throat> butts and recursive lines. I call this one the butt piece. I, just, I don't know why. I just wanted to draw butts. But look at those recursive lines. I was using a pencil brush. Some of these were single lines. Some of them are repeated right along here. Um, where's that other one? Recursive. And they don't really look their best. They don't look at, they don't look their best. They have their own little thing. They look like rough Conte, but still, they're not, they're not looking their best. They look too rough. I don't feel like I can animate this. 
And I, I, I just, I, I guess I just have I've been better since. Um, the snake girls, really low efficiency. The lower, the lines underneath, I was too dependent on them. Um, some really basic, this is all wrong, but I guess I was getting there. This is before my New Year's resolution, I think. And then the cats. Uh, still very hairy lines, you can see, much dirtier. Which is okay, it was supposed to be sketchy, but compared to, again, my discipline now, I probably couldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to reproduce this if I wanted to. Because I am at a higher discipline level than I was before. Look at this trash. Look at this. What the fuck is that? It doesn't even make any sense. Like, what the fuck, you know? I tried to use a different brush. Bad idea. <clears throat> Please remember, no matter what age you are, no matter what stage you are in, no matter what kind of art you make, no matter what your style is, no matter if you're into manga or realism, line efficiency is a good thing. And if you want your, your sketches to improve, you want your sketches to have a real drive behind them, you want your sketches, uh, in my opinion, and I will always say this, animators will always draw the best. They may not be the best, the best illustrators or the best painters um, or the best at anatomy, but they draw the best. They have the best looking drawings I've ever seen because they're the ones that get the most practice in on line efficiency. You want to be, you know, you want to be a jack of all trades. You don't want to just be able to illustrate, but your sketches look hairy. The sketches look like the Yeti. <clears throat> you want to be able to have a little bit of everything in your portfolio. You don't want to show your weaknesses. There shouldn't be that massive a margin between what your what your specialty is and what your uh, what your secondary specialties are. There should be they pretty much should be leveled, um, and your specialty specialty should be way at the top. That those should be your goals for your portfolio. Everything is at an equal skill level. All right. Never draw your lines on a white background. That's just uh, that's just a, that's just the rule. No white backgrounds. <laughs> that's just the that's just the law of this religion. <clears throat> All right. The sound went out. No, the sound shouldn't have gone out. But anyway, that's all for today. I'm so sorry about my rant. I am sorry if I sounded rough. I'm sorry if I beat that poor student up. I'm sorry if I singled you out. But um, please understand that it's coming from a deep place in my heart. I know all of you have these amazing stories and amazing characters that you want to bring to life. These hairy lines will not help you. And the, the, removing the hairy lines and maximizing your line efficiency, you'll be well on your way to perfecting your, your, your sketches altogether. But anyway, thanks guys. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.